All right, that means uh, when it go into Monday morning, then that is uh, you will be considered late lah after you submitted um, after 12 midnight on Sunday. All right. So um, this assignment is going to take up 50% of your total coursework mark. All right. And then um, as far as assignment is concerned, this is going to be a group assignment. Okay. Only two students uh, can be in one group. All right. And then um, each group is to complete uh, all given tasks and submit a soft copy of your report, uh, eight to 10 pages only. Don't write too long. And then don't, don't make very big uh, figure. All right. But uh, again, your figure need to be big enough for me to read. Lah. Okay, some actually make very, very small figure that I can't read at all. So it must be big enough and then you need to organize your um, your diagram. All right, organize your diagram in such a way that it can fit into the eight, eight to 10 pages uh, report. Um, and then the size is 11. All right, use uh, font times new Roman, size 11, single spacing. And uh, this ten, 8 to 10 pages does not include Appendix 1 and 2. Yeah? So Appendix 1 and 2 is uh, given at the end of this uh, assignment brief. So you need to submit by Google Classroom again. So Google Classroom is to monitor whether you submit early or you submit late. Yeah? Uh, even though this is a group assignment, the assessment is actually individual. All right, The assignment is individual. And it's based on the criteria that I have written in Appendix 1. So I summarize them here. All right, I assess uh, each and every one of you on your ability to design, construct, and simulate a communication system model using Simulink. All right, and you need to explain the model as well. Yeah. And then the second criteria is your ability to evaluate performance of your design. All right, by means of result analysis and discussion. Yeah, and then uh, relating to theory and concept learn in lecture and any other trusted uh, sources. Yeah. Okay, so if you if you make use of uh, any source of, source of information other than your course material, then you need to cite where you actually get that information from. All right, and uh, take note of this. All right, if you uh, if I actually find uh, any two reports that are similar, all right, then uh, I will give the student involved uh, zero marks. All right, if they are the same, then you I, I don't care who copy from who, you get zero marks straight away. All right, and then any student with suspicious report or answer, I will call you for viva yeah, to prove the originality of your work submitted. So that means uh, if I find your un your report is uh, suspicious, suspicious in the sense that it's quite similar to once and some of the students, um, and yet your discussion is a bit ambiguous, then I will call you. All right, I will call you to attend a Google Meet, and then you need to actually present your answer, explain your answer to me. All right. Um, so in the past, I seldom do this, all right, because uh, students say I buy kampong already, da da da, you know. But now everybody is at home. You can easily go online, so I may call you this time. Yeah, if I during the marking, I find it very uh, suspicious or anything that I don't understand, you know, because based on your by looking at your parameter setting, uh, I would know that you will not be able to get that kind of graph, yeah. Um, then I may call you to explain to me how you get that graph. All right. Um, so the objective of this um, assignment, all right, is to investigate suitable techniques to be used in digital communication system uh, using the uh, computer aided tool. All right. So as far as the task is concerned, this is a description. Right. So you will be able to do this uh, before you have done your lab session number three. All right. So this is just to um, show you the question in advance. 
so that you know uh, where you should uh, focus on when you do your lab three, all right? And you, if if you actually able to do lab three, um, then yes, you shouldn't have uh, too much of a problem completing this assignment, all right? If you don't do lab three, there is no way you can do this assignment, yeah. So, uh, as far as your task is concerned, okay, this is a description. We have uh, two types of uh, transmitting devices and one receiving device in the wireless communication system. One type of device is portable. Portable meaning uh, you can bring it anywhere with you. All right, and transmit is 8-bit data at the rate of uh, 10,000 data per second. Okay, another type of device is powered from main. All right, and transmit is 16 bit data at the rate of 20,000 data per second. So you are asked to design a communication system that enable any authorized uh, IEEE 802.11 compliant device to receive data from these two types of transmitting device within the vicinity of 50 meter. All right. And then in order to allow more devices to be connected to the receiver, the maximum bandwidth allocated for each device is 80 kilohertz. All right, if you can do less, it will be better. But the uh, mid maximum is 80 kilohertz. All right, probability of bit error rate must not exceed 10 to the power of minus 6. All right, if you can achieve a bet, um, uh, better result, is better, of course. Uh, then construct. Okay, to validate that your design works, you need to construct a simulating model based on your design. All right, evaluate the performance of your design in the aspect of energy efficiency with the limitation on bandwidth. Yeah, so each member should evaluate at least two designs for each type of transmitting device and select the better one. Yeah, uh, with the probability of error and bandwidth limitation in mind. All right, so I actually suggest, uh, because there are two of you in a team, so I suggest uh, one of you work on this, this type of device, another one of you work on this type of device. All right, the second type of device. Um, then you need to, based on your graph, you need to specify the minimum EV over N0 that satisfies the bandwidth and uh, burr requirement in your final design that you selected. Yeah, and also you need to identify the SIR, which is the simple error rate, and the which is the data error rate, okay, at this uh, EB over and not value. So you must justify your selection with BER plots, SIR plots, and the plots, as well as the frequency spectrum. All right, so this is the task given, and the next one. The next two pages are on the appendix. Appendix one actually specifies the assessment, assessment criteria. All right. So you'll be marked according to this uh, six, six criteria, all right, of which uh, the major one is on the analysis and discussion. All right. In the past, uh, students just tend to, uh, you know, um, submit the model diagram, submit the graph, and uh, without much writing. So if you look at it, uh, the big proportion of your mark actually go, go into your analysis and discussion. So you need to spend uh, quite quite a considerable uh, amount of uh, time in actually analyze your result and uh, writing your discussion. Yeah. Um, so the first one one is on the design which is a model diagram so in the model diagram i actually look at the blocks that you use yeah as well as the parameter that you set so i actually look for parameter setting as well yeah so for parameter setting uh, so make sure you present uh, your parameter setting in your report yeah and then simulation performance so i look at your simulation result yeah does it actually satisfy the system uh, specification and requirement which has mentioned in the task All right then uh, I actually look at your results yeah um, so as far as conclusion uh, the last one here is uh, you are able to conclude 
All right, uh, with some explanation why you choose uh, your final design um, as why you choose that system as your final design. So you need to actually uh, conclude as well. Um, so for report presentation, uh, it's only 5%. Basically, this one, uh, I have to put this one in because the last time students just simply, you know, dump everything in without organizing. So make sure you actually organize your report properly all right and then if you actually refer to any external resources make sure you cite the source all right and your figure must be properly labeled as well yeah and this one this is quite a common mistake students don't don't label their figure properly all right uh, when they are doing they show me the result for the model diagram let's say for uh, psk they label it at ask so if you do this, uh, definitely marks will be deducted. And then for the appendix two, this is the crime cover that I want you to attach as well. So the appendix one and two, you need to attach uh, as your front uh, uh, first two pages of your report. So in this uh, front cover, the important thing is for you to type in your course code and title, uh, academic year, and also you need to declare that is your original work. Yeah. Put down your name, your student ID, which group you are in, your contribution. Okay. Contribution is very important uh, because I will mark according to your contribution. All right. So don't say 50%, 50%. No, I don't want that kind of a contri uh, <laughs> quick contribution. You have to write, you know, your contribution. Let's say student A, your contribution is in chapter 135. You know, student B, chapter 2, 4, 6, and so on. All right, so you need to specify clearly your contribution, or you may want to say uh, your contribution is on the 8-bit um, data machine, the machine that actually um, transmits 8-bit data, or this one is a machine that transmits 16-bit data. All right, so then I, I'll able to mark accordingly. Um, then signature, you need to sign. All right, to sign that to declare that this is your original work and you are the one that actually did this yeah and the final mark i will fill in here okay any question on your assignment who is that what you mean so late so there are total four design in one report yes Two students submit, prepare one copy of assignment. Two students submit. Ah, you need to combine. You need to combine. Okay, so two students, two students combine their report. There's only one report in a group of uh, two students. So you find your team member yourself. All right. Um, so because everything not online, eh? uh, yeah, your student can come from the same group or can come from different group. Do we need to write two discussion and conclusion for each device? Um, yes, yes, we have to. So you need to discuss based on your two discussion okay for each device for each device uh, i say you need to have a minimum of two design isn't it so therefore uh, you need you need to have a discussion on your two designs all right you can combine your discussion uh, of the two design in each device all right but then after that there can only be one conclusion out of the two designs that you have uh, evaluated for for each device uh, which one is a better choice all right which one would you choose as your final design okay any other question
So you can see, uh, even though it's a group work, okay, it's a group work to actually uh, design two machines for a communication system. So uh, I've designed the I've designed your assignment in such a way that you can do your work separately. Yeah. Oh yeah, you need to write your discussion separately. So the format that you need to show in your, yeah, two are also transmitting device. Okay, let me. All right, so let's say, um, okay, let's say you have, let's say you have device number one. All right, uh, device number one, you have two design, which is design one and also design two. All right, so design one, under design one, you have to show your model diagram. All right, then you need to show your uh, simulation result. All right, simulation result, and you need to discuss. Okay, discuss all your, your results. Yeah, this you may want to explain your model diagram as well in your discussion. You need to explain your parameter setting as well. Yeah, so for you, you need to discuss each and every one of them, or the more important one are in the parameter setting because some are actually just default. All right, then um, here. Same thing for design number two, you need to show me your model diagram. All right, your simulation result. All right, and then you, you need to discuss. Meaning you need to explain your design number two. All right, in terms of your parameter setting. And then you need to explain also your simulation result. All right. And after that, you need to compare. Compare design one and design two. All right, and this is where you conclude. All right, why you choose design one and not design two. Let's say, let's say you choose design one. All right, then you need to compare them and then you need to conclude. All right, compare design one uh, in terms of the, the performance, right? You may want, and then what we we'll compare? Basically, the criteria to compare would be the bandwidth, efficiency, all right? The energy efficiency, as well as the probability of error, okay? Based on the probability of error that I have specified, yeah? And based on the bandwidth uh, limitation that I have given in the assignment, uh, the brief there, and then you need to talk about your energy uh, requirement, which is your EB over and not. All right, so you need to compare them. It, again, this will be a, a brief discussion, maybe one paragraph. Then you need to conclude uh, which one you're going to choose as your final design for device number one. All right, same thing for device number two. All right. So in this case, your work is pretty uh, independent, even though there are two of you in one group, all right? So your work is pretty independent. So therefore, uh, I will mark again, that, that actually account for why I actually mark you separately. Okay, is that clear? Oh, wow, so late one. Uh, need to design two devices. Uh, you need to present two device, uh, two design for each device. Okay, there there are only two device that you need to to present as your final design. So finally, there are only two design. One design for device number one. One design for device number two. All right. So conclude here means you need to select.
Okay, you need to select your final design for device one. Yeah, and same thing for device number two. It's the same. You need to present at least two designs. Um, so means four sets of design, eight sets of discussion, or write own discussion on own two design. You have four sets of design. The entire report will have four sets of design. All right, and uh, why would you have eight sets of discussion? <laughs> uh, one, two, three, four. Okay, you have uh, for each device here, uh, you actually have uh, each design will have actually have one discussion only. Uh, if you talk about your final discussion here, then maybe another one. Uh. All right, everybody write their own discussion on your own two design, yes. Yeah, yeah, correct, correct. Yeah, right. Each student will only be assessed through the design that you, the, the device that you work on. All right. And the mark won't be affected by the other member who did the design for design B. Yes, correct. So that's why in your contribution area, you need to specify, you know, you actually work on design uh, device A, you actually work on device B. So uh, as, far, as far as I can see, I think that is a, uh, a clear cut way of uh, assigning your tasks, uh, uh, dividing your tasks between the two members in the team. All right, but it doesn't mean that you cannot help each other. You can actually help uh, each other also by actually discuss uh, your results and finding yeah and you may help each other in terms of your parameter setting they will be different definitely the parameter setting for the two design will be different all right so uh, we, i actually put you in a group of two um, so that you can discuss with each other all right but you cannot copy from each other because you need different design Okay, because the design will be different, so you won't be able to copy from each other in, in, each, uh, in each team. Um, you, refer to, uh, you refer to your, um, for this one, you have to uh, refer to the, uh, the IEEE standards, all right? You need to suggest uh, actually uh, which standard is actually the most suitable one for you. All right, and then for 50 meter vicinity, then you may have to check your, you have to make sure your power, the power of your transmitted device can meet that requirement. All Any other question? Uh, Miss. Yeah. Uh, if, after if I got if I have the design device one design and the device two design right, so do I need to do the another final conclusion to choose which is device one or device two to make a conclusion or just leave it at this? Mm, no, uh, if you work on let's say device okay, let, let's say if you work on device okay like A and B better right? yeah. This is device A, and this is device A. Device A, you have done this. All right. So this is your device A. And then let's see this, you have your device B. Oops. Uh, 
Okay, so as far as your concern, if you have uh, done your part, uh, which is select the final design. All right, after you have selected your final design, which is this one here, then you have done your part already. Because in this system, there are two different devices. So you have to choose one final design for each device. That's all. Oh yeah, correct. No need to choose between device because that communication system, the receiver is a, should be able to um, as long as the design for your device devices uh, fulfill or satisfy the requirement for uh, IEEE 802.11 standards, then um, it should be okay. Uh, yeah, no. No need to choose between device. No, uh, because uh, your 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 as far as the system is concerned, you have two different devices. Right? How are you going to choose between device? <laughs> okay. Any other question? No more question. Okay, if no more question, I think uh, now you you just have a overall understanding on the requirement is enough, uh, yeah. Um, and then later on when you start doing it, uh, when you have more question, then only uh, you ask. Huh? All right. Yeah. Correct. There are the different, these are the differences uh, between the two devices. One is portable, one is powered from main, and also the bit rate is different, the data rate is different, and also the, the number of bits for each data is different as well. Yeah, that will actually show you the bit rate is different. How do you know the device is portable? Huh? Okay. All right, you, you, when a device is portable, what does that mean? If you have a portable device, what does that mean? Yeah, correct, correct. It, it uses battery, so you need to a bit careful on the power consumption, yes. So therefore, uh, the power required to, for transmission should be as low as possible. All right, so you should maintain a certain degree of energy efficiency while meeting the um, the bandwidth limitation, okay, and also the the probability of error as well. All right, so in your discussion, then you need to. Be aware like, if you are working on the portable device, then you need, need to be more aware on your um, your power consumption. But if your system is uh, you are actually designing the second device, which is the power from main, then the energy efficiency may not be a primary consideration. All right. So for for the one that is portable you need to actually prioritize your decision on energy efficiency. Yeah, that's why I actually make two design. Uh, ask you to do two devices, all right, so that you can see the difference.
All right. So, and then as far as your report is concerned, you may want to add one final conclusion, right, on uh, why is design one using this, uh, design two using that. Yeah, just to um, strengthen your your choice. Yeah, your your reasons for your choice. Okay. Any other question? No? Okay. So um, the reason that I actually show you your question, um, actually this is the time to show you the question as well, uh, and the task. All right, so that you actually, uh, Make sure, make sure in, in your lab tree, you are able to plot, you are able to plot the bit error rate curve, all right, the BER curve, uh, SER curve, and so on. All right, if you are not able to plot all this during your practical session, you will have a hard time in your assignment later on, all right, and you also need to be able to plot your frequency spectrum. Okay, what else? Any more questions? If no, then I'll move on to a tutorial discussion. No one? Okay, so let's, I'm gonna start on tutorial.